time for Wednesday's hour number two on Hashtag Daily K with your host, Peter Bint. Korean dramas, movies and even lyrics. Why is the world paying attention to Korean stories? From classics to modern masterpieces, time to dig deep into the charms of Korean literature. On Check It Out with Paul. I forgot to ask you, when we do the opening and we do our kind of conducting, Ivan, actually, you know, who filled in for me a couple of times, now host of Super K-Pop. But one of the best hosts on Andy Dang. Probably, probably. (laughs) Much better than the guy at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. I'm from 9 a.m., so that can't be me. Uh, Ivan has a course that he does, like music course, yeah. every Saturday. And I remember he said that one of his big assignments was he would have to conduct an orchestra to play one of the pieces that he came up with. So yeah. the question on my lips is, did he conduct, number one, while that music was coming, and number two, was it much different to what I do? I didn't make him conduct. You didn't make him? No, Did he not he's... feel like he should conduct? Did he See, a good host, I would say, would have watched all the previous episodes and saw that that's what we do. Peter, that's the essence. Peter, Peter, that is the Peter, very essence. Peter, Peter. What? We're radio. Most yes. people are listening, not watching. That's what sets I've the good the... hosts apart from the bad hosts. I've seen okay? the YouTube figures, Peter. No, I <laughs> would be... Chomp it at the bit. I will be watching every episode for months before the fact that I filled in for someone. That's what I do, Paul. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You're uh, going to say hello to me because you've not said hello yet. No, before I say hello, why do you keep fiddling around with the volume, putting me off? A good guest sits there quietly and does not put my headphone volume up to the point where I don't want to whisper. What's wrong with your hearing today, Paul? No, it was just very loud. Okay. So I was turning it down. Now I didn't know which right. one was mine. Okay. Now, good morning, Paul. How are you doing? I'm all right. You're all right. How are you? I'm all right. I don't like July, to be honest. It's Why? Mon- monsoon season in Korea. Like, yeah. We, but... we, we did the phrase the other week where we were saying, you know, if it's July, it's monsoon season. And that's my least That favorite. was the phrase. It was something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Okay? Is that something that Koreans say? Uh, uh, I've not heard it said, but sometimes our writer picks out phrases that are a bit dated, but they, they want... Are you blaming said. the writer? No. Because no. a good host would never blame the writer. A good host would spend months okay. looking at sentences that would be suitable to do with July and the monsoon season. That would I be... hear Ivan... There's <laughs> lots of sentences. That would be stepping on his toes. And I, uh, sorry, our writer's toes. And I do not want to do that. His <gasps> toes? Oh, we've got some other, other opinions on good hosts here. Okay. I'm not going to name names. Name them. Name names. Uh, but what has been said is a good host would have taken the listeners into consideration and not alienate. This is not my opinion. Um, it just says, Paul, you should watch more Super K-pop. <gasps> I was watching Super K-pop yesterday. Oh, were you? I did. Was it good? It was very good. Okay, well... Because it's, it's much more fun than the 10 a.m. slot. Shove <laughs> your 20 a.m. slot. Uh, today... Was that meant to be me? Absolutely, you Abingdon boy. That's what you sound like to everyone else's ears. So do you like the monsoon season? I do like the monsoon season. Why do you like the monsoon season? Okay. Because when you're inside, like last week, Uh last week, I think it was last Tuesday, it rained a lot. Rained the whole day. It's amazing. Amazing. As in it amazed me, <laughs> not positively, but it am- I was like, wow, that yeah. much rain. So I'd, I'd work in the morning, uh-huh. so got a bit soggy on the way home, went to the supermarket, picked up a load of ingredients, mm-hmm. had got some shipped to my house overnight, as Ooh, you can do here, Okay, and spent the afternoon making curries. Oh, curries. Made two delicious curries. I made a smothered lamb <gasps> with lots of coriander cooked for three hours. Wow. And then made a chicken and coconut tomato curry. That sounds delicious. With potatoes. You didn't eat them both at the same time. Of course. Two curries. Yeah. Uh, 
Like, Hang on. You go to a restaurant and you order multiple curries, but yeah. at home... Yeah, wow. because what you do is you is you, you then, when you serve it, you have yeah. a plate, you have your large round plate. Sure. And you have two small mounds of rice. Oh, two you different separate, rices? No, same rice. <gasps> but same two, rice, but two piles. Mounds. Two wow. little mounds. So then you can put one curry on one rice, this one new, curry on the other rice. New to me. Meanwhile, my wife is making rotis. Wow. From scratch. Freshly made. Freshly made. Is that easy? Yeah. Really? It's a, Peter, the whole, need, the whole subcontinent of India makes them. Do you need like a big clay oven kind of thingy, Majid, no. to like stick them to? Or no, no, no. Good? A tandoor okay. is very good for making naan bread. Ah. But you can make rotis in a frying pan. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've learned something new. The so, first but, time ever on Check It Out. But the point is, Peter, <laughs> yes. the point is, rainy day, uh-huh. cooking curry, beautiful smells, sound of the rain. Ah. Oh. Cat sleeping. You like the rain as the perfect weather to cook a curry. Yeah, say. just and to be indoors, to have a, to have a, a, a good cooking day indoors and then settle down with a curry, a beer and Doctor Who. That does sound pretty good. Yeah. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And I, I will say that Tuesday, I was playing football in the evening. What? And it re- I wanted to say another word would begin with P, but absolutely bucketed piddled, down. Piddled, piddled down. Piddled down, yes. And it was brilliant. Like, I love playing in the rain. That's one of you my favourite things. didn't slip up? Things. You do slip over, yeah. but that gives you an excuse not to be good like I am not anymore. So you're not really a Jude Bellingham, then? I'm more of a... No no overhead kicks into the goal in the last famous... 60 Jude seconds. Law. Jude Law is who I am. Oh, you're going bald. I am indeed the same way. The male pattern baldness. Uh, today's book, I like the title... Yeah, The Fisherman's Calendar. Oh, It's very nice. It's by Yun Sondo. It's translated by Kevin O'Rourke. And we're going back hundreds of years today. Wow. Um, it's something a little bit di- different. It's traditional Shijo poetry. We've had some Shijo poetry on, on the show before. Yes. And it's all themed around fishing. There are in the West, aren't they, like fisherman songs as well? And, sure. And but this shanties. is... Shanties. L- yeah, sea shanties. But this, yeah. Is less about, this is less about a group of sailors on a boat going out to sea. This is about a man... On a lake, on a oh. river, in his own boat, going fishing for pleasure. Oh, interesting. And the whole book is dedicated to that? Yeah, it's 40 poems. It's a cycle of 40 poems. Wow. And it goes through all the seasons. Uh, so I've got poems from spring, autumn and winter to share today. Of course, we can't do all 40. Uh-huh. But we can do a dozen. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're not just doing three. No. Because Shijo's are pretty short. Right? They are. So, so that's why I thought we could do a few from each season. Okay. And I remember when we last did that, it coincided with me filming something where I met a, an American professor who's really into Shijo's and they have that rhythmic repetition, yeah. right? But I can't remember. I'm pretty sure what he said as well was that a lot of the translations, they can't have the exact same rhythm oh, they sometimes. They can't, no. So it's just... Yeah, you, you, you're capturing the essence of the poem, but not the same rhythms, which, to be honest, is quite important in the original Korean. Yeah, but yeah. This, is, this is the issue with translating poetry above mm. fiction, is that with fiction, you can capture the essence of the writing. Yeah. But with poetry, you've also got, you know, the stanzas and the number of syllables and the, the rhyming schemes or the lack of rhyming schemes and all sorts of things. I'd like us to one day, just for fairness and objectivity and balance, do limericks in Korean. You think you could come up with a few? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Broadcast uh, friendly, please. Yeah, sure, yeah. I'll How do, do you translate there was an old woman from Ealing into Korean? Ealing is in harmony. Okay, good. Good start. Um, so tell us about the author. This is hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Uh, Yun Sondo, born in Seoul in 1587. Wow. Um, yeah, so we're talking way, 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 way back. Uh, he is considered to be one of the greatest Shijo poets, um, and this is his masterwork that we're looking at today. Mm-hmm. Um, even though he was one of the greatest poets, he was not necessarily the most popular, especially when it came to the royal family and the royal court. Oh. Because he liked to get political sometimes and wow. protest against the tyrant king who was in power at the time. Actually got banished at one point. But he kept writing poetry. Oh, great. He was not going to be extinguished. Kevin O'Rourke, we've definitely featured on the show a few times. Uh, yeah, we have. Um, sadly, he passed away in 2020, but um, his contribution to Korean literature is immense. He was an Irish Catholic priest, and he lived here uh, from 64 onwards. So he was here for a very long time. Wow. And he translated short stories, translated poetry. Uh, he was actually the first foreign national to get a PhD in Korean literature oh. from a Korean university. Wow. 
And uh, luckily, we have some of his works like this one. This is available for free online. I you won't. don't have to pay a penny. You don't have to pay a single one for it. Or get a virus by downloading it questionably. Well, no. one would never do that. No. Fisherman's Calendar. Just write that in. Yun Song Sondo and yeah. Kevin O'Rourke. You yeah. find it lovely stuff. All right. So, have you just randomly picked out Shijos throughout the book? No, no. Of course not. I wouldn't do that. Okay. And what I've done is I've picked the first four uh-huh. from spring, the first four from autumn, and the first four from winter. I know you don't like July, so I skipped summer. Oh, thank you very much. Um, looking at the Shijos, they're like numbered, but. The numbers are not in order. That's interesting. But they've been clumped together in seasons. Yeah, that's how he put it together. So uh-huh. he wrote them at different times. But when uh-huh. he's, he was creating the cycle, yeah. he would have put, think, oh, I think this goes in this order or this will work well like this. Lovely. So we're going to start off with our spring shijos. Yes. Shijo 1352. Mist lifts on the stream in front. Sunlight illumines the mountain behind. Push away, push away. The night tide is almost out. Soon the morning tide will be coming in. Chiguk chong, chiguk chong, wasoa. Flowers in profusion adorn the river village. Distant hues are best. Shijo 369. The day is hot. Fish jump in the water. Way anchor, way anchor. Seagulls in twos and threes fly back and forth. Chiguk chong, chiguk chong. Osoa. My fishing pole is ready. Did I put the makali jar on board? Shijo 679. An east wind springs up. Waves get up a lovely swell. Hoist the sail, hoist the sail. I leave the east lake behind. Move on through to west lake. Chiguk chong, chiguk chong. Osoa. The mountain in front passes by, giving way to the mountain behind. Shijo, 1572. Is that the cuckoo singing? Is that the willow grove greening? Row the boat! Row the boat! A few fisher houses glimmer in and out of the haze. Chiguk chong! Chiguk chong! Osawa! Shoaling fish flash in a clear, deep pool. Um, and there's some Korean just been left in there and Romanized. I see. Yes, is that common throughout the book? Then, yeah, this is this seasons? is yeah, this is sort of the the rowing, the sailing. You know, the 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 song that you sing as you're oh, going it's in, out to fish. It's the same Korean in yeah. all of the shijos. Yeah. that's interesting. Chukuchong, chukuchong, osawa, osawa being familiar, right? Many people who watch Korean TV as well will know that show. Also, our Hangukum Chami Jean, like it's a greeting, isn't it, to people? But in this case, it's just the song that they're singing as they're rowing out. Yeah, it's not a very polite title, though, I have to say, using Banmal to the foreigners. Hangukum Chami Jean. Also, what? Also, or Shipshio. Are you of that mind? Because there are some foreigners, I think, who just like the Panmal and just, just use Panmal all the time. Yeah, but they're, they're wrong. <laughs> You need to be respectful to to your host country. I also feel a bit awkward doing that. Yeah, I think just play it safe. Be respectful. You put a yo on the end. That's yeah. all you have to do. Put a yo. Mm-hmm. Not asking you to do the very formal in no. because. No, just a yo. Put a yo on, you'll be safe. So he was also a fisherman. Yo. <laughs> That's what a good host would do. Yeah, um... <laughs> I, not professionally, but okay. I think this was this was the place where he went when he wanted to get away. Oh. This was his little retreat, okay. and so he's dedicating, you know, these poems to his favourite pastime. There's a lot of poems in here, right? Yeah, 40. Okay, and it's all dedicated to this, all using that same line in the middle yeah, as well. Yeah, wow. you know, this is his, his way of showing his appreciation. And so, you know, in spring, these first four poems capture that glorious moment where you're heading out in the boat... And you're thinking, this is going to be a great day. Anything is possible, then. Uh, yeah. Um, and, I mean, he's taking his makkali with him. Well, he, he which, wants to make sure it's there, the jar. Yeah, which suggests it's <sighs> not just about the serious fishing. <laughs> it's about having a nice time, having a bit of a drink, having a bit of a fish. And it um, seems like he's going alone. Uh, yeah. We well, why wouldn't you? 
Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe your 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 missus or someone would want. Why to come would you along. take your wife fishing? I don't know. I don't know. Have you I... ever taken your wife fishing? Uh, You've never been fishing. She's have you? taken me fishing because her father likes fishing. Okay. so she took me with her father. Yeah. So your father, her father, took you. Yeah, vicariously, my wife took me, but yeah. she didn't do any fishing of her own. Well, I will be honest. Yeah. So spring, solitary it's... spring. Okay. Yeah, and also he sort of he gets political occasionally. Oh, you get the feeling the like f- fishing poems. Uh, yeah, but it's more about being away from the hustle and bustle of the court, you ah. know, and what's going on there. But it's mostly about the joy of being on the water. And then when it comes to the close of day, it's like that wonderful feeling of ah, time to go home. Oh, you know, nice. walking back to your hut, resting your weary feet. Does it follow a kind of timeline? It follows then? a day. Ah. So it's a day of spring, a day of summer, a day of winter, Ten uh, uh, autumn and winter. Okay. Yeah, and so in summer, which I've avoided because I know you... <laughs> what was the sentence you used about July and the monsoon? The, this inevitably the monsoons or something? No, I can't you... even remember. July means monsoons. Good, a good host would remember the, the, the quotation of the phrase he used no. in a previous show. No, because this encourages listeners to go back to that show and listen again. But surely if they could possibly be a host... Huh? That they'd be wanting to listen to the shows again and again and again for months in advance. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so, I've avoided summer because it's all about him battling with the rain. You know, it's, there a, we it's go. a tough time. See. But it's also about him enjoying his secret spots, the places that other people don't know about. Oh. About him losing track of time when he's fishing. You know, staying out there until twilight is close at hand and then going back to his snail shell hut. Oh. It's really quite lovely. His snail shell hut. Shaped, Peter, not actually made from a snail shell. That's not what we It's not we Tom do Thumb. Okay, so the second poems that we're going to look at then, we're fast-forwarding to autumn. We are, and so these are the first four poems of the autumn part of the cycle. Shijo 799 How unspoiled the life of the fisherman Away from the outside world Push away, push away Laugh not at an old fisherman He's part of every painting Chikuchong, chikuchong, osoa Seasonal pleasures are all fine But the autumn river is best of all Shijo 1226 Autumn comes to the river village The fish grow fat Way anchor, way anchor. Leisurely hours spent on broad waters. Chikukchong, chikukchong, osoa. I look back on the world of men. The farther off, the better. Shijo 894. White clouds get up. Tree branches rustle. Hoist the sail, hoist the sail. Off to the west lake on the full tide, on the ebb tide to east lake. Chikukchong, chikukchong, osoa. Red shank. Blooms in the pondweed. It's a joy to see it everywhere. Shijo 299. Out there where the wild geese fly, I see peaks I've never seen before. Row the boat, row the boat. I fish a bit, but it's the mood that really intoxicates. Chikukchong, chikukchong, osoa. The evening sun dazzlingly bright. Gold broiders, a thousand peaks. seems like he really enjoys autumn fishing. He loves autumn. I mean, after the heat and the rain <sighs> and the mess of summer, don't you love autumn? Oh, everyone in Korea loves autumn, don't yeah. they? It's like a rule almost. You can't dislike autumn or spring in Korea. In two months' time. Yep. In two months' time, Peter. It'll be here. The start of September. It's still going to be unbearably hot. <laughs> but there'll be that little that little prick of wind. That breeze. Yeah. Especially in the evenings as well. I like that line. On the world of men, the farther off, the better. Which Looking is what back. fishing is all about. Leaving them behind. Yeah, getting away from your father-in-law. Smelly men. Uh, not my father-in-law <laughs> in particular, but just in yeah. general. And so I love the autumn poems because it really this is this is clearly his favourite time of year. Okay, um, he catches these fish; they're freshly caught. He broils them to eat. Oh, it talks about that side. Yeah, of things, eating them it, as well. Also talking about how beautiful the moon is at night, mm. and then those first frosts of autumn <sighs> that that don't chill you, that right. aren't cold, but you feel like. <gasps> 
It's crisp. Winter's coming. And at the end of the day, there's like this tiredness that he talks about. His hermit clothes weighing him down. Okay. And I wonder whether this cycle of poetry is not just about the four seasons, but also about the four seasons of life. Oh. He's getting older. Okay. And he's maybe in the autumn of his life and not just the autumn of the year. Okay. So in part three, we'll hear the end of his fishing cycle. So no, we won't. No. No, we're going to hear the first four of winter. Yeah, but then. We're going to hear the end. You're going to summarize the rest of winter, including the end, no? Well, a, well, good, a, good, host guest would, would. a good host would already know whether I was going to do that. Okay, and then we're going to talk about hook, line, and sinker as the title for our debate. Or it's not a title. That's just a little thing to let you in on what you know. What's it about? It's a bit of cheeky one today. A cheeky one. Yeah. Let's get cheeky. Do you remember? I sucked you in. Hook, line, and sinker. We are the cheeky girls. We. Do you remember that song? Or were you in Korea? Maybe at that. Time? No, I was in Korea, but I do remember that song. I remember Lembit Opik as well. Yes. There's a blast from the past for you. We are the cheeky girls. This is not the cheeky girls. Shijo 221. Winter sunlight falls thick after the clouds have cleared. Push away, push away. Ice binds heaven and earth, yet the sea remains unchanged. Chiguchong, chiguchong, osawa. Billow after billow, rolls of silk unfurled. Shijo 1887. The net's freeze, phrase is from Dufu. A line and pole in proper order? Has the boat been sealed with bamboo? Way anchor, way anchor! They say nets freeze on Zhao Lake and the Zhang River. Chiguk chong, chiguk chong, osoa. There's no better place for fishing now. Shijo, 1464. The fish have left the shallows, gone to deeper pools. Hoist the sail, hoist the sail! Let's head for the fishing grounds while the weather holds fine. Chiguk chong, chiguk chong, osoa. Fat fish bite. They say, when the bait is right. Shijo 59. When the snow cleared last night, the whole world had changed. Row the boat, row the boat. A sea of glass in front, jade mountain folds behind. Chiguk chong, chiguk chong, osawa. Is this where the immortals live? Where the Buddha lives? It cannot be the world of men. It sounds quite magical, some of this scenery with the snow and the ice and everything. Yeah, but that's what winter's like in Korea, in the countryside at least, not in Gangnam. Yeah, you've got lots of old traditional bumpum, those like room dividers with paintings on that yeah. feature the winter scenery. And it does even in that look absolutely like another world. Maybe that's why he's questioning, it can't be the world of men, this, where I am right now. Exactly. I, th I think it's it's lovely. He sort of changes this lake that, that is so familiar to us through the previous 30 poems into mm -hmm. this sort of fantastical place. But it is just the winter landscape. And he celebrates it. He also celebrates this wonderful thing in winter where nature is fighting against the cold, harsh reality of the season. Mm. But he also enjoys the season. Yeah. He's not saying, you know, even when it's rainy in summer or when it's harshly cold in winter, he still celebrates the glory of that. Oh, he's not getting too downbeat oh, no. about it. No, these poems are very, very positive. But this is still the lake we know that has been in the other poems as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Right? The Zhao Lake and the Zhang River, I'm not familiar no, with. No, no, that's just, they're talking okay. about the phrase, uh, the nets freeze. There. That's where it comes okay. from, yeah. And so at the, at the very end, you know, the day is done. There are red petals that tint the snow-filmed road as he walks merrily home. And you've got a feeling that spring is just around the corner. It's going to start again. Yeah. So it's a glorious end to a glorious year of fishing. I didn't ask you, but have you fished? Do you fish? I have fished. Will you fish? I, d I don't know. I, d I, f I feel nowadays uh, less keen on ever fishing again because I don't want to hurt the fish. Oh. I feel I feel a bit sort of sorry for them. Yeah. But the thing I love about this book and this sort of tribute to fishing is because it links not just to Korean traditional culture and more modern pastimes, mm. but also to the UK. Oh, how so? Did you not fish as a kid? 
I did actually. Yeah. Yes. Your my, dad my, did your dad take you fishing? Your uncle? My dad's friends at work. My dad was not very good with his hands at anything. Okay. So yeah. he tagged along and brought me at five AM I remember we woke up. I remember that first fish so vividly. Getting the big rod as well. Yeah. When you're a little kid, that's huge. We went out and uh, it was all foggy on a little tiny, you can't say river, it's like a little brook or stream. Sure. We sat there for hours and got absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I bet your dad and his friends were very happy. They were happy just to be out of the house, <laughs> yeah, taking well, some fresh air. This is the thing, and this is this is a, a pastime that I think has been lost with city life. Yes. Um, and it is, I guess, stereotypically male. Mm -hmm. The idea of going off by yourself or going off with a friend yeah. or a couple of friends and just sitting by the side of the lake or the river or the stream or wherever it is yeah. and shooting the breeze. And yeah. the point is, it's not about catching any fish. Uh -huh. And in the UK, certainly, it's not about eating the fish either. You, you no, put the fish back. never eat the fish, right? But it's the joys of, one, having time with your friends mm -hmm. or, two, getting a bit of peace and quiet and being a bit mindful, yeah. being in the moment. Where you can you can drift off and think about your life and dream about you know whatever future you want, or you can just be thinking about nothing at all, yeah, and just enjoying the feel of the rod in your hand as you you feel that slight tug on the line as it drifts slowly down the stream. Yeah, as I recall, it was yeah much less about shooting the breeze, about talking about anything. Like there would be hardly anything said. Yeah, It'd be so quiet for hours, and you know, I think us guys. We sometimes want that and we like that. And sometimes it's because we just can't think of what to say. But it's a safe space to not have to talk about anything. I think it's why that why you play football. Yeah. I think because there's no there's not much talking apart from over here. Yeah. This way. There's Good no one. conversations. But but you you're communing. Yeah. Your spirits are communing, and I think there's something there. What's interesting is you still see fishermen here in Korea. I haven't seen a fisherwoman. I'm not saying they're not out there. It is interesting. I, I wonder if it's maybe to do... I know it's a bit of a stereotype, but like definitely true with my wife and my sister-in-law compared to their brother. They're so chatty when they meet up, you know? Yeah. And so it's not really suitable when you're fishing because that's what my dad and his friends taught me. They're like, you've got to be quiet. You, know, you yeah. don't want to disturb the fish kind of thing. So may, maybe it's to do with that. But you're right, there are still fishermen. Like I said, my father-in-law, until very recently, was still going fishing fairly regularly. Yeah, and if you go along the Han River, I'm not sure whether you're allowed to <laughs> in all the places. Uh, certainly when I used to bike along there, I used to see fishermen. Mm. Um, and they'd be out early. Yeah. Um, and they'd maybe have a bottle of soju beside them. Just and... random, like, lone guys here yeah. and there on Sometimes the shore. a couple of them nearby yeah. each other. But, yeah, not talking too much, just enjoying the moment. Yeah. And we're getting into that hottest and stickiest part of summer. Mm. Um, and it felt like this is a nice reminder that we can take time for ourselves. Yeah. That healing, you know, this catchphrase that's been around in Korea for about a decade and a half, healing's really important. Yeah. Um, and whether that's being in nature, whether it's going fishing, whether it's playing football in the rain, yes. there's something that can make you feel good and make you sort of commune with nature again. Absolutely. Tigger is saying sometimes fathers will use fishing to talk to their sons about life experiences. Uh, do they look at the birds and the bees? <laughs> Uh, if they can find the words he has as a caveat. And I think that's, yeah, a lot of dads, you know, so especially stereotypically and maybe our generation of fathers, maybe not so good with words. So they'd yeah. have to have an activity out there in front of them to take the pressure off. And then you just maybe say a few pearls of wisdom here but and it's, there. But it's also... Their love language. Mm. We talk a lot about love language these days. Yeah. You know, what's your love language? But for fathers, so traditionally, especially for our generation's fathers and before, yeah. their love language was sometimes showing us how to do the thing they love. Yeah. And, and sort of making us appreciate how much work goes into that yeah. and doing it in a loving way. Yeah, that was what it was all about back then. I don't know if I'm fathering incorrectly, but I tried to do that with football a couple of times. But my kids just aren't into it. And I don't know, I think dad's gone by might have stuck with it and tried to get their kids to fall in love with it somehow, maybe by hook or by crook. Yeah. But I took the opposite approach and I was just like, OK, what are you into? Show me and I'll get into that. And I think a lot more parents are like that these days. And then we end up kind of regretting it. Like I know a lot of parents now are like, oh, I wish I hadn't have just followed my kid's lead. I wish I'd have been mm. more like my father and been a bit more strict and say, you're going to do this, whether you like it or not, and you're going to end up liking it. I don't know.
Well, the, the problem is, is that when you were growing up, there wasn't much choice. That's true. It was sports, books, television. Yeah. That was about it. Whereas these days, there's so many other options. There is. I would like to go fishing with my kids. We go like rock pooling. Does that yeah. count? <laughs> I, I would say it's a form. It's hand fishing. <laughs> and I go. agree. It's, it, is, it is another communing with nature. That yeah. moment where you're, sort of, you're, you're lifting up the rock to see if you can see a little crab or whatever yeah. it may be. You're poking the sea urchin and your dad's saying, stop that, you're hurting it. <laughs> it's the opposite way around in our family. I'm poking everything and the kids are like, they're going to get hurt. Um, you're right. It's that thing. Just being out there in nature with family, loved ones, whatever. All by yourself. All by yourself. It would be a bit weird if I drove over to the coast to go rock poorly by myself. No, I it feel. Is it okay? Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah. All right, I'm not that weird foreign guy who's rock pooling every week. What, what is weird about rock pooling by yourself? As a, as a 40-year-old, I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't do you feel enjoy it? Do, I enjoy rock pooling, but I've never done it myself. I don't like doing anything myself, Paul, if you if you know me better. Like, I've never been to the cinema by myself. I've never Peter. been to a restaurant. Well, I've been Surely there, you've been to a restaurant but by just yourself. just for a quick eat, like not a nice restaurant or oh, anything. You're missing like out. All right. I'll concentrate on the food next time. I had a great pizza by myself last week. A whole pizza? Yeah. Wow. Italian style, not, not deep okay. dish. <laughs> One line review, please. A delightful cycle of poems that show the true pleasure of a simple pastime. Indeed. It's not about the fishing, is it? Like, no. It's just about being with nature, by yourself, with your thoughts. That's the message. Exactly. And uh, next week's book. Oh, it's a good one. I'm looking forward to it. It's a <gasps> sequel. We don't often get these. Wow. It's I Want to Die, But I Still Want to Eat Topoki by Beck Sehi, translated by Anton Hur. Yes, it's the sequel to I Want to Die, But I Want to Eat Topoki. Oh, they've if just changed one word there. I added. Still... <laughs> they've added a word because no. it's a sequel. Uh -huh. A good host would recognize when I said sequel yeah. that it was about adding a word and not changing it. Sequels don't always Hang mean on. to add Hang words. I just got a message they? from Ivan. He says, yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, we will be back with perhaps Paul, or we might see if we can find someone I'll else. I'll get Chef Ryan in to do the books. Next Wednesday's segment, <laughs> Chef Ryan will be spectacular. Uh, thank you, as always, especially for your poetry readings, Paul. They I must do be enjoy the most it. Difficult, I feel. Well, uh, thanks to you. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to the LTI Korea for their help with copyright permissions for all our broadcasts. Thanks to Yunson Do for his beautiful poetry and Kevin O'Rourke for his excellent translation. I'll be back next week with, uh, well, no, actually, I don't know if I'm back next week. A good host would uh, confirm that. Someone will be back next week with another book. <laughs> Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye. You can listen to Check It Out with Paul Matthews on Adidung Radio's hashtag Daily K every Wednesday from 10 a.m. KST.